Hi, I'm Monty, the software engineer, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up Qt for WebAssembly on your Windows 10 machine. So what is Qt WebAssembly? If you look at this Qt uh, wiki page on Qt for WebAssembly, it tells you that WebAssembly is a binary format that allows sandbox executable code in web pages. So what that means is you can use Qt for WebAssembly alongside with this mscripten toolchain to turn your Qt QML application into a format that can be run in a web browser such as Firefox or Chrome. So let's get started. First, I'm going to go ahead and grab the Qt for WebAssembly libraries. At the time of recording this video, the Qt maintenance tool actually has some pre-built libraries for you to go ahead and grab. You can find the maintenance tool in your Qt installation directory. Once you have that opened up, We'll just go to add or remove components. So we'll open up Qt. At this time, the 6.0.2 doesn't have any of the pre-built uh, Qt for WebAssembly libraries. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab the ones under 5.15.12. Just click WebAssembly. And if you haven't already done so, I do like to install uh, MinGW 8.1.0 64-bit as well. That gives you access to the MinGW 32-make command. So I'm going to hit next and update. We'll go ahead and let that finish uh, downloading and installing. And once that's done, I will come back to the video. All right, so that has finished uh, downloading and installing. So I'll just hit finish. The next thing we'll want to go ahead and grab is Python 3. Um, I'm just going to install the latest version of Python 3.9.2. Now, when you run the installer, very important, you want to add Python 3.9 to your path. So let's go ahead and do that. So that finished installing. Now let's go back to Qt for WebAssembly and look at what they want us to install. Uh, they want us to install mscript in the toolchain, so we'll go ahead and click on that. Go to Downloads, and here it gives you instructions on how to uh, clone the repository and download the latest SDK. So I like to use git bash. Uh, you can go here, git-sem.com forward slash downloads and download that, or feel free to use whichever Git tool you're most comfortable with. I just found it easier to use git bash because you can also run uh, terminal commands within it as well. So I have git bash loaded up here. I'm just gonna change into the proper directory where I wanna keep all my stuff. Um, and now let's go back to the mscripten page and download or clone the repositories. I'm gonna copy and paste that into here. So it cloned the EMSDK repository. Now let's go back to the mscripten instructions. Since we just cloned the repository, we don't really have to run git pull since we should have the latest. Here it gives you the command to install the latest version of the EMSDK. But if we go back to the Qt for WebAssembly page, um, here you can see you actually don't want the latest version of the EMSDK. For the version of Qt WebAssembly that I downloaded, 5.15, uh, you can see here in the Qt wiki that they want you to actually install EMSDK version 1.39.8. Um, it also gives you the command to install that. So it's this command over here. Let's go ahead and run that. So I'm going to CD to EMSDK and I'll clear the window, get some more space. Uh, so let's run EMSDK install 1.39.8. So now it's downloading and installing EMSDK 1.39.8. All right, so it looks like the EMSDK has finished installing. Uh, next, let's go ahead and add some uh, directories to our path. I'm just gonna go here and do it. Edit environment variables, edit. So if you start typing edit, you should find here the edit the system environment variables. I wanna go ahead and do that. Let's do environment variables. And for my user accounts path, I wanna add a couple directories and the first path I want to add is for the path to the Qt for WebAssembly QMake. So if I go to my Qt installation directory, which I have under C forward slash Qt, and then look under the version that I have for the Qt for WebAssembly libraries, which is 5.15.2. Here you'll see the different 5.15.2 Qt libraries that you have installed. I have two versions, one targeted for desktop using the MinGW compiler, and then here you can see the WebAssembly one. I'm just going to go into the WebAssembly version and then go into bin. Here you can see you have the QMake here for the WebAssembly version. So I'm going to copy this path. And in my environment variable path, I'm going to hit new, add this in here. And what this does is it adds this path to your command prompt 
So whenever you run something like QMake, it'll run the QMake from this path over here. And I also want to add the ability to run MinGW32Make. So I will also add that to my path. So under Qt, Tools, MinGW, Bin. Here we can see this is the one that I want to be able to run. So I'm going to copy and paste this path. New and add it in there. So now I should be able to run both the QMake and the MinGW32Make. So I'm going to hit OK, OK, OK. All right, so we've gone ahead and downloaded Python. We've downloaded the EMSDK, uh, as well as the Qt for WebAssembly libraries. We've edited our path environment variable to add uh, QMake and MinGW to the path. So let's go ahead and try that out real quick. Um, I'm using the command prompt now uh, only because when I tried earlier with git bash, uh, it didn't really play nicely with the EMSDK environment variable scripts. So, but I tried it out with command prompt and it seemed to work uh, much better. Now I'm going to run qmake dash dash version just to make sure that it's in our path correctly. Here you can see it's using Qt version 5.1.5.2. Uh, and you can see that it is the WebAssembly version. Um, if you see something like QMake command not found or you're using a different one, uh, you're going to want to go ahead and edit your path to make sure that um, it's calling the correct QMake. Here I've put everything in this Monty directory uh, just to make everything easier to access. Um, the EMSDK you can really have anywhere you want. All right, now let's go back to our command prompt. Um, then we'll go into documents. Monty and in the command prompt, obviously, since it's Windows, it's going to be backslashes instead of the forward slashes. Uh, we'll go into EMSDK. And here you can see to activate the SDK, you want to run this EMSDK activate. Uh, but instead of latest, we're going to do it on the um, version that we installed. So we'll do EMSDK activate 1.39.8. The script has um, added a bunch of stuff to our path and in order to test this out to make sure it works properly we'll just do em plus plus and since we get a valid output um, warning no input files that means the emsdk has successfully added the correct stuff to the path all right so let's build our uh, test example here you can see i have my smart thermostat example this was from my last video where we built a a simple smart thermostat UI using Qt and QML. Um, and then here I have a blank directory where I want to build everything. Uh, I've just called it build-thermostat-webassembly. So let's go back to our command prompt and then change into that directory, the build directory. So we're going to be running QMake within this build directory, but we want to target the smart thermostat example directory where we have all of our uh, source code. So let's go ahead and run QMake and then target that smart thermostat example directory. We'll hit enter. Here you can see that QMake has run. And if we go back to our uh, build directory, we'll see now that we have the make file as well as a couple other files. And if we run min gw32 make, it will go ahead and start building the example. All right, so the build has finished. It looks like everything went okay and we had no errors. Uh, if we go back to the build directory, we can see now that we have a bunch of files, including this HTML file here. Now we'll go back to the Qt for WebAssembly page and it will tell you which files you need to deploy in order to make this work. If you look here, these are the four files that you need uh, in order to make the application work. So let's go ahead and select those. We want the HTML file, the cute loader.js, our app.js, which is this, and then the .wasm file. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop those into my uh, website host. And now that everything has finished uh, uploading, let's go ahead and try it out. Here you can see it's downloading, compiling, and now here we can see the UI for our simple thermostat. Um, if you didn't watch the last video. Um, we did make this application in QML with a C++ backend. Um, the 65, the heating, the 70, and the state of this icon 
are um, set based on some Q properties we have set up in a C++ class. So this is a good example to test out both QML as well as the um, connections with the C++ backend uh, for the WebAssembly. Let's go ahead and try this out. Yep, so this still works where we uh, are in heating mode and the target temperature is below our current temperature. Um, so we don't want to do anything and it's holding. Whereas if we bring this up to a really high uh, temperature, we'll see that it turns to heating. Let's go ahead and open up our dynamic object here. This looks to be working well. Let's hit auto and then bring it down. And it looks to be working uh, pretty well. Um, the one thing I notice is the um, UI hasn't kept the same size constraints that we set up. If we maximize the window, we can see that the anchors are referencing uh, the actual browser window itself and not um, within the size constraints that we've set up in the QML code. So I'm not sure if that's a bug for Qt WebAssembly itself or if we can change that somehow within our QML code. Uh, but for the most part, it looks to be working uh, pretty well. Uh, we'll go to our settings. We can see everything here. We'll go to about made by Monty, the software engineer developed using Qt to QML. We'll hit our back button to pop the stack view. Stack view pops correctly. And now let's set our main loader back to our home screen. And it looks like uh, everything's working.